Hello and welcome to Victory Church Live. It's uh, Wednesday night, time for Bible study, and I'm so excited and so thankful to be here. I want to first saw it, say that to, to our church, to those that attend Victory, I want to tell you I love you and I'm thankful for you and I pray that you are uh, blessed and highly favored. And, and I mean that. I want you to be a blessed person, blessed people. I'm so thankful to be here. And I want to, uh, those of you that are connecting with us from other parts of the uh, country or even of the world, we want to say we love you as well, and we're so thankful that you've been able to join us. I want to first start off just by just just reminding you, if you if you don't mind, to connect with us. My name is Keith Castleberry. I get this wrong every time, so bear with me. My name is Keith Castleberry. I'm the pastor of Victory Church, and uh, I want you to connect with us. Of course, first through our uh, website, victoryupc.com. And then we have, um, of course, m many of you are looking on Facebook Live right now. We have a Facebook account. And of course, uh, excuse me, we have a Facebook account. And of course, we have the um, YouTube account. So with all of that said, uh, I want to just say that, that I, you know, however you can connect with us, come to our website and uh, reach out to us. If you have questions, you have uh, need information, if you need a Bible study, uh, if you're looking for a church, it doesn't matter where you live, let us know. We'd be glad to help you. It'd be our honor to help you. And so with all that said, I want to go to the Lord in prayer. Today, I was uh, on Facebook, in fact, and, and was connected. I'm connected to several missionaries. And one of our missionaries in uh, Nigeria said that, uh, was, was talking about how bad things are over there. Uh, oil prices being down, COVID-19, then on top of that, their economy has collapsed, and uh, it's just not a good thing. They went to the bank to get, um, I think, some money out, and, excuse me, oh man, I did that last night too, and it's so funny, last night I had my light turned on wrong, and I looked like a ghost, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just one day I'll get it right. Maybe in heaven, man, I'm perfect or whatever. But uh, anyway, um, they went to go get money at the bank, and it was it was so packed with people, and they were having riots inside the bank. You know, we've got missionaries all around the world that we sponsor and, and support, and like we're about thirty right now. And sometimes they're out of sight, out of mind. But I want us to pray for them. Pray that God would. Uh, bless them and help them and ask you to uh, to remember them and every time you pray. And so I'm going to ask us to go to the Lord in prayer right now. Lord Jesus, we come to you, our King and our Savior. I pray that you would help us, Lord, that you would look upon us and, and uh, touch our minds and our hearts and lead us, God. I pray tonight that you would touch every missionary, every evangelist, every pastor around this world, Lord God, the churches that are that are serving you and many under very dire situations. I pray that you would help them and bless them. Lord God, don't let us uh, uh, neglect to give you glory and thanks for the blessings we have and to honor you. But Lord God, don't let us forget our brothers and sisters around the world that are, that are trying their hardest to live for you in very trying times. I pray that you would work in us and through us. And tonight I pray that you would bind this word upon our heart and we give you glory and honor for everything in Jesus name. So uh, tonight I want to just start off and let you know the title of my message uh, is similar to last uh, Sunday's. Last Sunday I taught on from tested to trusted or I preached on from tested to trusted. And tonight I'm I'm going to carry that one step farther, if you will. I'm going to go from uh, trusting, if you will, trusting in times of trial, from, from tested to trusted and trusting in times, excuse me, trusting in times of testing. And so the reason why I've, I've, I'm saying this is because I believe, as I said a few months ago, I believe there's a lot of things going on that we can't uh, put our finger on. We can't figure it out. And um, this is a trying time for our world. And, and I believe it truly is a, a wake up call uh, to our to the church and a warning to the world. And I know that I know that things are uh, supposedly getting back uh, to normal, if you want to 
call what we're doing normal. But I don't believe this is normal, and I don't believe that it's going to be normal for a while. In fact, I believe that uh, we're going to have a lot more problems. And this is just something that we're going to have to deal with. We're going to be going through the fire, if you will. We're going to be tested. We're going to be tried. And through all of that, we're going to have to learn to trust the Lord, to really rely on Him. And that means a lot of things, to a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And all of us have got to apply uh, that trust in God in our own way. Many of us uh, have have lived in poverty, abject poverty around our world. Many of us live in uh, uh, relative uh, riches and in, in, in around our world. And, and we, Amer the American church is so well off as a whole. And so, but things aren't going to remain the way they are. Things now, now listen, I'm not a fear monger. So just bear with me for a minute when I explain this. Before all this happened, I told the church that people that prepare don't panic. And I meant that not only in the physical sense, but in the spiritual sense. And that is really what we've got to realize. We have to prepare, not only in the physical, but in the spiritual. We have got to be prepared in our minds, in our hearts. Every part of us has got to be prepared for what's coming. Now, uh, I don't know what's coming. Uh, God hasn't given me a, a, a picture. I haven't seen, I haven't felt uh, the spirit of prophecy. I just know what the word of God says. And I know that these things in the Bible have to be fulfilled. And so it doesn't take, um, it doesn't take a prophet. It just takes someone that's willing to discern the times and discern the days and discern what's going on and realize that these are the end times. And uh, there's too many signs in the Bible point right to our time. And, and so we're just waiting for little things, little things to get be accomplished. And so uh, re remember this as we go. We're going to be tested. We're going to be tried. But above all, above everything else, the whole point of everything we do is to trust God in the trial. Now, I want to uh, say that that this coming Sunday, as, as you probably already know, we're going to have church uh, for the first time in a couple of months in our building. And we're excited about that. And I've already had, I think, the, 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 um, schedules or whatever the, the RSVPs that we're sending in are are getting full. In fact, if they're not already full, and I've, I've already had a few elders that said they're going to come regardless of what everybody thinks. And I'm all for you, okay? Uh, I'm, I commend you, but I also want to caution you. We're going to have a, 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 seat, a seating arrangement for everyone, and our elders will be set aside where they're not around uh, most people, if you will. I, I think I'm going to try to say that, but anyway... But uh, we want to make sure that you don't become a statistic, just another number. And so as we go into this this era, this time period of, a, of maybe it's a few weeks, maybe it's a few months, I don't know. And, and who knows if we're going to go back to online services and stuff. I, I don't know. We're going to try to make preparations for whatever con comes up, any contingency that comes up. And so uh, with all of that said, I want to, uh, I want all of us to, to realize that uh, as we go back into the church, it's going to be different. Um, and I want to give this mental image to you, if I could, if you would just bear bear with me for a moment at the time. You know, and I know that in the world around us, uh, for instance, and I'm just going to say it like this: in China, uh, and there's, I'm sure there's other places, the church has to hold their meetings in secret. Their their buildings are usually. Uh, in, in basements and back rooms, and that's their church. And they have to go in and they pray and worship and they do all the things that we do. They connect with God, but they do so in a much different manner. And so what we're going to probably see while we are going to be exuberant in our worship and praise, I believe that we're going to have a little bit different perspective. And so bear with us as we get through this time period. So uh, if you don't mind, amen. So with all that said, I want to I want to start with just saying simply, and we're going to go to the Hebrews chapter thirteen, and I'll go ahead and put that on the screen for you too. Oops, the wrong button. Uh, but I want to go to Hebrews thirteen, and I want us to recognize that testing and troubles and trials is actually a place, uh, an opportunity for God to do great miracles. If you're like me, if or if, in fact, I would say almost everybody that I know of that has been living for God for any given amount of time, a short period of time, 
uh, we realize that all of our miracles come uh, during our hardest times. And I'm talking crazy, amazing, great miracles that come when we are going through the valley. And it is when those in those times that uh, that's where our trust in God is proven. And, and not only are, is our trust proven, but we, we gain a testimony. And so we'll get more into that. Hebrews 13 and 5, it says, let your conversation be without covetousness. And now I'll get into the details in a minute. And be content with such things as you have. For he saith, for he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. We may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man will do unto me. So it appears that we're entering into a time of trouble, a time of, of loss, a time of, of need or won't. I've, uh, and, and I'm not, again, I'm not a fear monger. I'm not trying to make people fearful, but I talk to a lot of people at our church and I see a lot of people that are either uh, furloughed, laid off, or hours cut way back. And, and uh, it's a fearful time for a lot of people. And I know that we've got the social safety net or the government safety net sitting there to catch us and all of those things. And we have, but we, we've got a lot of good things going for us as Americans, but um, this is not always going to be the way it's always going to be. And we are coming into a, a time period of what I would call, we, we're going to have a few conundrums. We're going to have some, some things to ponder, some, some things that we're going to have to discern. How are we going to react or act depending on what is going on? So while a, a positive mindset is good, it is positive mindset. I mean, I mean, I'm a positive person, and a positive mindset will get you a lot of things. It'll even get you a new job. I mean, there's a lot of things that a positive mindset will get. You. It'll get you a good wife, amen. If you're single, but uh, while a positive mindset is is fantastic, it it won't fix everything. And uh, some things are just what they are, and they're not. You're not going to change them by. Uh, positive mental attitude. You're just not going to do it. Another one is, uh, you know, uh, while we can never uh, live a victim mindset, sometimes we are at the mercy of the world. And so we are, and, and I don't know if I'm explaining this clearly enough, but we, while we're not, we can't live with a victim mindset, we are going to be the victim of many things. We're the victim of COVID-19 right now, but that doesn't have to be our mindset. So um, many things in life. I was thinking earlier, the Great Depression affected everybody. And what's coming will probably affect everybody. And we've just got to be ready for that. And so don't get the mental, uh, that mental attitude where I'm a victim. Poor me. So, and the, the last one that I wrote down was, while God works great and wondrous miracles, uh, sometimes we have to suffer to see the miracle. And so, the fact is that Jesus said, speaking in reference to times of trouble in Matthew chapter 5, he said, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you, and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son, the, the Son, to rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. In other words, life happens to all of us, and we're not going to be excluded uh, because of because we're in the kingdom of God. Many people get this idea that oh, I'm in the church, everything's going to be and you know everything's going to be hunky dory, so to speak. But that's not the way things are. I've had plenty of fat flats, fats too, but I've had plenty of flats. I've had plenty of bills come in the mail. I've had I've had health problems. I had my gallbladder taken out in January. wasn't the, wasn't the thing I was looking to do, and I prayed by the way. But uh, that's okay because I'm not a victim. I refuse to have that mindset. And so while we would love to be exempt from issues, from, from life problems, each of us know that this is not the case, that we're going to have to suffer. And the church is going to have to, just have to suffer alongside the world until God comes. If God, if God declares that we're going to have to go through a pandemic, then we're all going to have to go through the pandemic. 
If God declares that we're going to experience some hardships, then we're going to all have to experience some hardships. And through it all, what where, where the rubber meets the road is the church is going to have to lean more on God than we've ever leaned before. We, we have said we are trusting God. We have proclaimed through our songs and we have preached it and we have heeded that advice. But, oh God, we don't know what the future holds. And what it holds may test our ability to trust. It will test our ability to trust. So the formula that God gives us is simple. Don't get so caught up in living this life that we forget what really matters. Don't get so caught up that we lose our life only to gain something in this world. We lose our soul to gain something in this world. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people that, that, seem to, and I've seen it happen hundreds of times, probably thousands of times. I've seen people that brought their baby to the Lord and says, oh, brother Castleberry, and then you'll go pastor or whatever. I'm, we're going to dedicate our baby to the Lord. And I have a, a pretty much a clear policy. You're not just dedicating your baby to the Lord, but you're dedicating yourself to raising your baby in the Lord. Oh yeah. You know, honest, you know, we're going to Boy Scout oath. We're going to do it. You know, I say we will. And yet a few days later, and it wasn't long, few days, few months later, I see those same people that start, you know, they put their job above above their church or they put their home above their family or, or they put somebody else above what is important in their life. And they neglect the covenant that they made with God to raise their children. And and I'm, I, I know there's a lot of people out there that have given up some... They have they have sold out for a morsel a morsel of bread or or a little a little uh, a bowl full of beans if you will they've sold out their covenant with God the promises and 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 it, it's a huge burden on me when I when I think of all the names of people that that have hallelujah God help us that have come through the church and have 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 neglected their their covenant with God their commitment that they made. And uh, it's a burden on me. I, I never have wanted to, but I've, I've often wondered how many people have come to me and we've dedicated their children or we've, you know, given them in marriage to one another and those, those covenants be broken. And I'm a part of that covenant. It breaks my heart. And I, I just, I can't get over it. But my, my, my point is that we've got to be careful. So scripture tells us in Hebrews 13, let your conversation be without covetous covetousness and be content with such things as you have for he saith I will never leave thee nor forsake thee what an amazing promise what a it's just amazing that god has has such commitment to us when we sometimes don't have the same commitment to him but god has that commitment to us now remember and I, I'm going to get more in this in a little bit but remember all of god's promises are uh, contingent promises they're always promises of if you will then I will or then if I do then you will one or the other and so I'll, I'll give us some examples in a minute but on the opposite side of covetousness is contentment and the Lord said to uh, let your conversation in other words your lifestyle if you look at the the original language that word conversation means tropos and it means your manner of life your way of way of thought your way of life your way of living life and then the other, the other word covetous means uh, your love of possessions or money. So let don't let your way of life be all about money, all about stuff, all about possessions. Be careful what you make your life uh, focused on, and be careful that you you don't put things uh, in this world above the things of God. That is that is what He's trying to show us, and so through. Through this this future, few, through this this unknown future, I believe the tests are going to come, and I believe that one of the early tests that we're going to experience is the is a financial test. And I've spoken on these tests, many tests. There's so many tests in in life, and so many tests in leadership. There's so many tests in 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 every area of life, and there is a test. There are tests that we're going to have to go through. As, as Christ followers, we're going to have to be tested. Uh, I, I ministered Sunday on some of these. Abraham was tested 
uh, you know, and and we, he 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 passed. In fact, on the on Mount Moriah, he, he the, the Lord stopped him from from um, uh, sacrificing his son and said, "Now that I've tested you and you've proven, now I know you." And here, here we are with this uh, this almost. I, and I hate to say stuff sometimes, but this pie in the sky ideology of what living for God is about how everything is supposed to match our ideology, match our expectations, match our our uh, mindset, our traditions, our cultures. And, and I believe that God is going to come one day, one day, and I don't know when, but I believe that God is going to rip the proverbial custom and tradition rug out from under our feet. And in fact, he's doing it now. Look at me, I'm online, teaching a Bible study online. And, and I don't know how many's on here, but but he has he has ripped our customs and our traditions out from under us, and he has he has taken us back to the bedrock of of what it really means to be a Christian, and that is to to build your own fire in prayer and in and in, and in reading of the Word and in fasting and commitment to worshiping when nobody else is around, when somebody else isn't doing it for us, when. When the the songs aren't playing, and maybe maybe you know we don't have any, uh, uh, and I'm I'm just going to be rude about it, but we don't have a cheerleader up there on the platform guiding us along when to when to worship, and 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 the pastor don't say the key words and say it in the right way so that we know when to shout. God help us to realize this thing is changing. Everything we're everything about our lives are changing, but the most important thing is that we have a relationship with God, and it's not based on customs and traditions and and money and blessings and all that stuff, but it's based on a commitment, a trust in God. Everything we, everything, and I have no hesitation to say this, everything we go through is to teach us to trust God. I, I, I said Sunday, and I don't, I don't want to repeat myself much, but I have to because I do. But my grandmother used to say, son, it's just a test. It's just a test. And, the, and it's not just a test that has no end. It's a test to get me, Keith Castleberry, to trust God. When when I when we come to College Station and I was praying and and uh, seeking God's will and I was I was so frustrated because the church wasn't growing as much as I thought it would and I and or I thought it should or whatever else you know I'm such a great preacher and all that kind of stuff but I, I I'm whining and crying to God one day and the Lord I felt like answered my prayer and He said before. I can build the church. I got to build the man. In other words, before I can before I can put people in this church that will follow you, I've got to make sure that you are right. I've got to test you and trust and try you so that you can trust me. And that is the ultimate end of all the things that we go through. No matter what you're going through right now, there's literally there's no matter what it is you're going through, all of it is moving us, trying to move us to a place that we trust God. Whatever it is, fear, doubt, sickness, anything, lack, whatever we, we are short, it's are we gonna trust God? Scripture talks about this, this nature, this human nature, this uh, let your conversation not be with covetousness. That's a, that's a nature thing. It's, it's, we are, it's not only nature, but it's our nurture. We in America especially have, have been brought up to be greedy. I mean, I mean to be ambitious and to, be, to, 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 to want things that, that uh, others have. And, and we have, as, as we used to say, we, you know, we compare our lives to the Joneses and, and, and or whatever else. The, I don't care who the, whoever it may be. But we compare ourselves amongst each other. We see the new car drive down the road or we see the new house being built or whatever it is. And don't, don't, please don't get me wrong. I'm guilty as well as anybody is. But we, it's, it's been our nature and then we've been nurtured into that. And things are changing. Things are changing. I, I believe it with everything inside of me. God is, God is working on his, on his church. God is working on his people. And he's trying to get us ready. And he's trying to help us to understand that, that there's some things that don't really matter in this world. And, and some of the things that we put our trust in aren't really going to get us through. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with applying ourselves to 
to knowledge and, and ambition to a, a, a limited ambition, uh, applying ourselves to improve our home or improve our vehicle or improve our life. I mean, that's just the way it is. Uh, uh, scripture tells us that is that is a good thing. And I, I've got scripture to back all that up and I don't want to get into it too much, but but we've, ca- we've got to be careful for the love of money. We've got to be careful that we not be greedy of gain. We've got to be careful that we're not we're not uh, after the what as the Bible says filthy lucre. And uh Colossians Colossians chapter 3 verse 5 says mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth for fornication he talks about you know killing the killing the flesh and he talks about fornication uncleanness inordinate affection uh evil concu- concupiscence which means lust and covetousness. And then he says which is idolatry. 1 Corinthians 6 and 11, 6 and 10 says that talking about the people that won't make heaven, it says, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So we've got this, this huge burden. And uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I want to be very careful. It's, it's about our perspective. Again, I, I got to be careful. I don't want to. I don't want to beat down somebody that is wanting to start a business, or somebody that's wanting to buy a house, or somebody that's wanting to get a new car. That's not what I'm talking about. It's how we perceive our possessions. Do our possessions possess us, or are we in control of them, still living for God? And that that is the dividing line. That is the dividing line. There, there is many scriptures, and I'm going to read some of them. But, but uh, believe me when I say that that the Lord is is not against us uh, preparing for our future. God is not against us. In fact, in one says he one place he says, "Consider the ant who who works all summer to provide for himself in the winter." And and all of us, and and I have of course elders that are listening to me tonight that have worked all uh, spring and summer of their life and, and fall of their life. And now they're in the winter of their life and they're eating off of that. And, and thank God for them, because if it wasn't, we would, we would have to be providing. And that's not a problem. We're not here against providing, but it's just that they were looking ahead and they were applying those, those scriptural principles. But a, but a Christ follower is to be careful. We're supposed to be very careful, very content, if you will, with what things we have. This does not mean that we are not to improve our lives. Uh, Proverbs 6 and 6, it says again, and I, I've already repeated, said it once, but take a lesson from the ants. You, and this is New Living Translation. I love it. Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wise. Though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work, they labor hard all summer gathering food for the winter. But you, you lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? A little extra sleep a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. So in, in, in fact, in reality, this moment, this time, if you have the ability to prepare for the unknown, to prepare, to plan, to, to gather into the barns something that will sustain you when things aren't always so easy, you would probably be considered wise in God's eyes. But you would be, you would be considered foolish if that's where you place all your trust. If you only do it for your own glory, if you only do it for your own needs, if you don't look at the at the widow and the and 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 the, the orphan, if you don't consider the 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 things, the needs of the house of God or the needs of missionaries or the needs of, of your neighbor, if you don't ever consider those things, and 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 some of us, and really seriously, some of us need some help working on our compassion. Working on our compassion. He said, look to the ant. Bible talks about it in 1 Timothy 5 and 5. He talks about the now a true widow, a, a woman who is truly alone in this world, has placed her hope in God. She prays night and day, asking God for help. But the widow who lives only for pleasure is spiritually dead, even when, while she lives. Give these instructions to the church that no one will be open to criticism. But those who won't care for their relatives, especially those in their own household, have denied the true faith. Such people are worse than unbelievers. They're, King James says they're worse than infidels. That's what the, a man that won't provide for his own is worse than an infidel. Worse, you're worse than a sinner. You're worse than somebody that don't even believe the gospel. So we must realize that God has a plan and his plan always trumps our plans. His, his 
Testing will always trump our our preferred times. Amen. But what's the point? What's the point in all this? And I'm I've got to come to a close shortly, but I want to I want to open some things up to you. What's the point? We must again, we must learn to trust God. We must learn to trust God. And as as a blanket statement, everything that we go through is to teach us to trust God. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 10 uh, let me let me just go to let me just go to verse 11. And they came, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you that you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. While this world truly contends with uh, an unknown evil, an unseen evil, COVID-19, and, and, and possibly this is happening for years, I, I'm, I'm not... I'm not trying to build it up into something it's not. I'm not trying to make it, push it down into something it is, but, or the other way around, I'm sorry. But, but believe me when I tell you that we could be dealing with this for a long time and it already has and will continue to change our world. But we've got to, we've got to contend on a level and on understanding that God knows exactly what he's doing. He, he has allowed this. He has opened the doors and he is opening the doors for the church. He's calling the lost back home. He's calling the, the backslider back home. He's calling whosoever will, if you will, to come unto him. Now the world is gonna be full of fear. They're gonna be full of anger. They're gonna be full of, of, of trouble. They're gonna live out their, their, they're gonna live out their life in anger and bitterness, but they need to see a church. They need to see a church that is trusting God. No matter what we deal with, no matter where we're at, no matter what's going on around us, the Bible says to, to be content in our place in life. What the writer of Hebrews is saying is that we are to be satisfied with our lot in life, to be satisfied with our possessions and the things we have, uh, to be satisfied with our present conditions, if you will. But, but because we know because we know God's plans for, for his bride and we, we, we know that he's got a plan for his church, that in that above everything, we must be content that God knows exactly where I'm at. And he knows exactly where you're at. He knows exactly where you're at. We are, we are in the middle of a, of, of a time. I heard it today. In fact, I think it was today or yesterday. We're in a, we're in a time period that no living person has ever experienced anything like it. They, they just don't know how to express it. I mean, and, and I, I don't know that, that I, I'm sure there's other people that have lived. In fact, I know there's people that have, that are alive today that lived through the Spanish flu, but they didn't have the technology we have. They didn't have the threat to our freedoms and our liberties. And they didn't, they didn't have a lot of things that we have. And so it's different conditions, but the same thing at the same time, we've got to realize that God knows. And if God knows, then we should be content with that. While the world doesn't know, and I don't know what the whole, the future holds and what's going on, we should be content in the fact that God knows, and that's okay with me. As long as he knows where I'm at, as long as he knows what I'm going through, then I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Even as the, as the world's economy is literally, literally on the brink of disaster, I mean, it's just, it's crazy. And, and of course they're pumping it up, pumping it up, throwing, throwing make-believe money in it and trying to, trying to make everybody, you know, in, in God, we trust on our bills and trying to trust in the full faith and, and, and of the government and all that. And it's just, it's crazy. But, but reality is there is, there is a verse that comes to mind almost all the, it just comes to my mind a lot. One of my favorite verses and, and, and it's the verse that we need to learn to live by. It's the, it's, the, it's the passage in the Bible that, that everybody that's hearing my, hearing my voice tonight can, can apply to their lives. And, but you, you, you can't take it lightly. I'm, I'm trying to be cautious in how I say it, but you can't take it lightly. We're not talking about just seeking the Lord while it's convenient on Sunday morning. We're not talking about you know seeking the Lord just while it, it, as long as things are going our way and it's our song and and I'm, I'm not trying to be rude but scripture says but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you 
One scripture says that, and, and, and I believe it's Matthew 10, he says, don't you know that you're more valuable than the sparrows? That he knows the very hairs on your head? What a, what a revelation if we, just, we could just wrap our mind around the knowledge that God loves us more than anything else he's ever created. And he loves his church more than all of his creation. He loves his church. Bible says, and I believe it's in, in Psalms, I don't remember exactly where it says that, that some put their faith, their trust, I believe it says, in horses and some in chariots. But I will put my trust in the name of the Lord. I want to trust God. I believe tonight that that while we don't see the future, and, and I, I'm, I'm not trying to portray into the future something that we don't understand or something I, something above my head. It is something above my head. I'll tell you that. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what the future holds, but I do know this. God holds the future. I don't know what time holds for us, but I know this. God holds the time. My health is very insecure. My finances are very insecure. My home, my possessions are all just a, almost a figment of my imagination. In fact, in fact, if when I get to thinking of where he brought me from and where I'm at today, it blow it baffles me. God, how did I get here? How did I get this phone and and all and this shirt, this nice shirt and this watch? And how did I get all this stuff? It's the favor of God. It's the favor of God. But just as much as He's favored me, when in in a, an era of our life that God has favored me, there's also an era of our life that He's coming to judge His people and judge the church first. He's going to judge the church first and he's going to try us. He's going to test us. And in the middle of testing and trial, we're going to have to remember this. It's very important that you understand this. We're going to have to encourage one another. We're going to have to lift one, each one, each, each other up. We're going to have to, we're going to have to be strength for one another. We're going to have to bring, bring, uh, bring our arm around somebody else and lift them up when they're in trouble. There's a lot of things that we don't know about the future. A lot, of, a lot of unknowns, but we do know this. God knows where we're at. And he has created us in such a time and such a place for, for such a time as this. Not to just occupy a, a chair or a home, but to be about his business. To, to witness, to reach out to our friends and our family. But I, I, want, to, I want to warn you, and I'm, I'm trying to, I want to be very careful how I say this, but it's the way it is. Over the last several weeks, I've been considering some things that are in the Bible. And if we if we ask anybody, it doesn't matter who, if they're if they're following or they're trying to follow the Lord, you ask anybody, show me the narrative, show me the examples of being people being saved in the Bible. Show me the examples. And you would immediately go to, because of the way that the Bible's written, the book of Acts, uh, of the rest of the books of the Bible, either they're the 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 life and the, the uh, birth, life, and death of Jesus, or their their epistles on showing how people how to stay saved. But in order to get saved, they have to go to the Book of Acts. And I realized something, and I, I realized this about ten years ago, and then it popped in my mind again recently. Every time you see something, someone being filled with His Spirit, being baptized in His name, every time you see someone being saved in the Bible, they are already seeking Him from. The book of Acts chapter 2, they're already gathered around. They're, they're celebrating. They're, they're in a spiritual mindset. They're celebrating the Feast of Pentecost. You go through and you, you, find, you find the Ethiopian eunuch and he was reading the Bible. You go through and you find Cornelius and he was, he was praying and, and, and seeking God. You could go all the way through all the examples and everyone that came to God was already seeking God. What does that mean to us? My trials have come and gone many times because I have been frustrated and aggravated with people that did not want to hear what I was teaching. <laughs> I would get so frustrated in people that I'd try to teach them a Bible study and they would just it'd go in one ear and out the other. Some of them would, would say, oh, I, I, I agree with you, but I got to stick with my traditions. Ah, drive you crazy. You need to be content to be a planter of the seed. You need to be content to, to be a waterer of the seed. Wherever God's placed you, not only, not only in life physically and, and financially, but in, in the kingdom, realize that God is, God is allowed. He, he opens and closes doors. He sets up and he puts down. Find your place in the kingdom and be content with it. And don't be discouraged when people do not listen to you. 
Some we think need to listen to us and they won't. But when we find that one hungry, Bible says something about like this, says don't cast your pearls before swine because they're just going to take it and rend it. They're going to stomp it under the fan. You won't even find your old pearls because you put it before people that don't even want to hear it. We're coming into an era, a time, a period of time that that people are, people are, they're, they're, we're in it. We're in it now. People are totally at perilous times. They, they deny the very God that created them. They deny that God wants, you know, a man and a female to, uh, to be a male and a female. They, they deny everything. They can look at the creation of heaven and earth and still deny God. And I'm going to tell you today that, that as we go forward, you're going to have a lot of people that deny the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're going to, they're going to reject it and it's going to feel like they're rejecting us, but that's not, that's not what it is. They're rejecting the King of glory. And we have got to be content with that. We've got to be okay with that. So I've got to close while the world got to close. I just, uh, Oh God, help us while the world is propagating and pushing, um, success and, and ambition and even greed while the world is watching the ups and downs of the stock market. And I know many of you, many of those that are older than me or my age and older or whatever, you, you've invested all your life into the stock market thinking your retirement's going to get you through and it's, it's crashing around you. Get your Bible out. Get your Bible out. Look at, look at the Bible. In, in, in the Bible in Matthew 10, I'm, I'm going to read this because it was, it was part of my reference earlier. Fear not that, fear them not therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak in light and what you hear in the ear, that preach you upon the housetops and fear not them which kill the body, but, and, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall to the ground without our, your father knowing? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, you are more valuable than many sparrows. Trust God. Church, we're going to be tested. We're going to be tested. You are going to be tested. And I'm not, I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here to be a strength to you. When you're tested, I'm going to try my hardest to be there for you. But we've got to, it's not only about me, it's all of us. We've got to learn to trust in God, but we've also got to learn to lift each other up, to be strength to one another, to bless one another, and help each other get through the times to come. I pray that God helps us all. I don't know, maybe we're in that that, that, that eve before the darkest hour. I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe we're a few weeks or months or maybe even years away. But when you consider all that, that could, could happen, nothing in this world compares to making it to heaven. Nothing. Heavenly Father, our King and our Savior, I pray, oh my God, that you would help us Lord, you see the hungry heart. You see the hungry mind, those soul that is, that is striving, that longs to live for you. I pray that you would give them a strength in their mind and a strength in their heart, God. I pray that you would renew them in the spirit, that you would help them to walk, to talk, to deal with this world with an understanding and, an, and a realization that they're not, this world is not our home. This world is not our home. This world is not our home. We are just passing through. I pray, God, give us the right mindset. Don't let us be covetous. Don't let us be greedy of the things of this world, but to be greedy of the things of the kingdom, to desire the greatest things, the things of the kingdom. I pray in the name of Jesus, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So tonight as I close, I want to encourage you again, please connect with us. I, I mean, Got to be careful. Paul said, I don't want to preach to others and then become a castaway. God help us to, to not live our lives for years and years and years and then forget at the very dark, the very time that it's most important. Live for God. Don't be a wimp. <laughs> don't be scared. Trust God and let's move forward. In Jesus' name, I pray blessings upon you. God bless you.